Neil deGrasse Tyson, known for being smart, <laughs> um, uploaded a video that wasn't very smart. <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson, when even reasonably intelligent, do smooth brain. This was quite a smooth brain thing. It was quite a surprise. I just. It's just another demonstration of how, when it comes to something that isn't a social norm or something that involves, you know, animal rights, people's brains do a fart. Crikey. Chuck. Yes. I have an idea for an explainer. Okay. And it's just, I just want to riff on plants and animals. Okay. I don't know if there's a lesson in here or insights, but I just have a lot of thoughts. I'm just going to sort of spill them out. Right okay. Away. Well, okay, here's can, my can first we thought. Both delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, here, here, I just want to just share some... You know what I like about that one? I haven't heard that one before. You Okay. Do you know that you have the same moral rights as a tree? Oh, you didn't like that. Do you remember all of the the uh, concerns people had about uh, tuna being caught oh God, yes. by nets? Right. And the issue wasn't that tuna were being caught by nets. It was that the nets were, we're trapping... hurting dolphins. Dolphins. Right. Because and... dolphins aren't delicious. And, <laughs> no. <laughs> and tuna. I mean, to some people, dolphin is delicious, hence them eating them. What kind of like comment is that? Is. <laughs> no, that wasn't. Okay. So the, the argument Crikey. was in the net. Is this, did he think he was being funny or. <gasps> Yikes. The, the tuna can breathe, but the dolphin can't. Right. Because a dolphin is an air breather and it doesn't breathe in the water. Right. So you kill the dolphins if the net doesn't come up quick enough. Yeah, you drown right. them. Okay, and basically they drown. All right. So, um, which by I the way, I'm I'm just gonna say, whether you believe in a god or not, if I breathe air and I live in the water, maybe there's something wrong with that design. <laughs> you had it coming to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of we're asking for it. Okay, <laughs> for like you breathe air, but you live in the water, <laughs> and when you drown, you kind of had it coming. Right. I, I was just saying. I, I, I'm confused by this guy. I think he thinks he's being funny. It's like, okay, all well and good, right? You're pulling some jokes and whatnot. But, like, these animals objectively are just getting yeeted out of the face of the of the existence, you know? It's like, no, you kind of had it coming. Bad design. What? Because they get caught in fishing nets and die? It's just a bit insensitive, really, isn't it? Just a bit like a bit of a crap thing to say. Uh, put that into other contexts where there's someone who's victimized, you know, harmed and killed. You know, when someone like murders, you know, you hear those serial killers who murder women. They're like, oh, well, she shouldn't have been out at night. It's like, no, maybe there shouldn't have been a serial killer murdering people, you know? It's just so really, really. He is there to provide comedy. He's a comedian. Oh, is he? Oh. Okay, well, comedy subjective. <laughs> I appreciate Chuck trying to be funny, but he isn't on this topic. Well, that's the thing, like, maybe he is funny in other contexts. I don't know who he is. But yeah, when it comes to, like, genuine victims and individuals actually being hurt, harmed, it's like, uh, like, you know, maybe when we get past this in hundreds of years, when we stop exploiting and killing animals, maybe we can have a little laugh at it. Or maybe if you didn't exploit and kill animals yourself, then maybe you could have a little joke, but you do, don't you? So. <laughs> All right, well, well, here's something about the dolphin. Because it breathes and eats from two different orifices in its body, uh -huh. it means it can't choke while eating the way we can. How you like that? Well, I got to There's say, no dolphin that ever choked from eating a pastrami sandwich. I'm just saying. This is true. Now, that, that however, is not a design flaw. I, I heard um, Hench say that, I don't know if this is the case, but that most choking incidents happen on pieces of flesh, which I wouldn't be surprised at. I would not be surprised. For us, because I don't want to look at somebody with a butthole in their neck. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just saying. All right, so, so it's a it's a design failure for us and a design feature for the dolphin, there even though they're swimming in the water. All right. right. Here's my point. The fact that we're protecting the dolphins but eating the tuna, I remember thinking to myself, why doesn't anybody care about the tuna? Right? It's it's also a big fish. All right. It, it had a life in the ocean. And so I realized that we have species bias among us. Yeah, no shit. Oh god, it's like a revelation, isn't it? Oh my god, yeah, we um we pet dogs and uh we gas pigs. Yeah. It's like something there's some weird bias going on where we like love one and for some weird reason we don't have a preference for the other. Yeah. <laughs> What? They aren't considering the animals in the joke. This is more of a joke about God and not believing in evolution. This is the thing. Animals are so exploited that they aren't considered in anything. You know, even when their bodies and their entire lives are in the equation and it's them suffering, they're just not considered. It's just a really sad, sad case. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Um, we we know, have species bias. We're saying... I don't want to admit what you're saying is true. I, and we don't want to admit it. I, we well, don't, I don't want to admit it, but... We, we yeah, don't this, like to... This is not a shock, no. People don't want to admit it. Like, they don't. Not at all. They don't want to admit, oh, uh, you know, they want to say they're animal lovers. You know, that they're perfectly logical about this and that they have consistent positions and that it makes sense. They don't want to say, oh, yeah, for... Arbitrary reasons, um, I value some animals to some extent, and then I devalue other ones so much that I uh, commit them to uh, a life of exploitation, killing, and having, yeah, no rule over their own autonomy. So... To yeah. admit it. Yeah. But it's there. I just want to reveal this in case people hadn't thought it through. All right? So we're saying we value the dolphin over the... No, we're not talking about vegetarians here who would eat neither. But for those who would eat the... Well, vegetarians have species bias because um, they think that it's fine for cows to still be exploited and killed, killed and chickens to still be exploited and killed, to still commodify these animals. So I think the word you're looking for w was vegans there. The tuna, and specifically not eat the dolphin because it's a mammal. So what you're saying is that in the tree of life, which has... Fun no, it's well, it's not that. You're not looking at a... People don't look at a dolphin and think, oh, they're a mammal, so they shouldn't be killed because they eat cows, pigs, sometimes horses, like goats. These are all... <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, a cow's a mammal, yet we artificially inseminate them, we exploit them, take their babies away from them, mutilate them, dehorn them, like, you know, put them through all of this and, yeah, kill them for their... their flesh and their secretions so it's not because the dolphin's a mammal it's just because we've arbitrarily selected traits about them that we like because we're in a certain uh culture certain society where we aren't we don't come into contact with them they aren't part of our exploitation and dietary you know choices so um it's easier for us to be like oh yeah we we like them we we yeah yeah we wouldn't want to hurt them we like them yeah the tuna though get wrecked no it's not that because we have biases with fish would people eat nemo no they wouldn't eat clownfish so we just kind of pick and select which animal we think you know is worthy of their own existence and the rest you know suffer the consequences it's always cuteness no not necessarily no because ca cows are incredibly cute you know baby pigs so cute people share around videos of them all the time and then they, they're eating their bodies so no, it's not always cuteness either. It's, it's socially speaking, I think it's got a lot to do with um, programs on the telly and culture just so happen to breed a certain animal and then we go, oh, this one's for eating. This one we'll put in all our sandwiches. And I don't think it's, I think cuteness can be a factor. I think intelligence can be a factor. I think them not being within the social um, societal area, so being from a different country, um, has it's a factor so no I think it's a lot of different things but unfortunately you know it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever fungus and bacteria and plants and animals you have taken this slender branch in that tree of life called mammals which is a offshoot from vertebrates okay mm -hmm. So both dolphins and 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 tuna are vertebrates but dolphins are a spin-off of that called mammals 
and they lactate, they give live birth, as do we. So we are saying you are close enough to us that we value your life above other life on this tree of life. It's not that they lactate though, Neil. Literally, like cows are some of the most exploited animals on the planet and they're mammals. We literally steal their babies away from them so that we can drink their milk. I, this doesn't even make sense. <laughs> so it's not that they're mammals, that we protect them or like value them because we clearly do not value mammals on this planet. We literally strip them of them, like their ability to have a bond with their babies, their own babies, uh, just so that we can have milk from them. Like, And some people said, no, it's not that they're mammals, it's that they have big brains. Their brain right, is they're larger than us. A okay, so now say we're that. saying. A lot of, I think if, if you ask people why they value dolphins, a lot of them would say, because they're so intelligent. Even though, you know, some animals like pigs, for example, who are incredibly intelligent, are still perpetually exploited and killed. So again, we just kind of arbitrarily say these things, but I think if you were to like take a poll of people and why they value dolphins, they would probably pin it on intelligence being the reason why they care more than they do in other instances. Now we're saying, we value them because they have big brains. Okay, I, I, all right, whatever rules you wanna invoke, I just wanna make sure people fully understand that every living thing on earth is as far away from an evolutionary uh, uh, place from the very first single-celled life as is all other life on earth. Okay, so you're saying, oh, the brain is important for survival. Oak trees are still alive today and they don't have any brains. Okay. And I'm, I'm so lost. <laughs> is it just because he's too smart for me? No, when we're looking at the lives of sentient beings, right? And this is why he's like, oh, you've, you've segmented. He's, he's going to go on and talk about trees, guys. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but when we're looking at animals like ourselves, we are seeing that they have the ability to experience things such as well-being, um, suffering, a pain, pleasure. They have the ability to experience, right? They, they have sentience. So, you know, when we are looking and perceiving the world around us, we generally come to this understanding that feeling pain, feeling bad, avoidable, right? You want to avoid that. And feeling good, feeling pleasure, you, know, you generally want to seek that. You want that, you know, want to, want to fulfill those good feelings. And we come to understand through, you know, our empathy and, you know, through uh, the way uh, others communicate that they too seek those things. There may be kind of some sort of variation in how they seek those things, what the source of those bad feelings are or good feelings are, it may differ slightly. But collectively speaking, there is a general consensus on what is good and what is bad. A tree, as far as we're aware, cannot even experience good or bad. It cannot experience, period. That's why we're like, well, we don't want to cause harm to animals because they actually have the potential to be harmed. They, like, they are an agent with, with their own set of rights, right? You, <laughs> like, if you, if you can experience, then there is that need for those rights. But if an individual cannot experience if it isn't even like an individual to begin with. There's, there's no need to protect it unless it protects sentient life. So, you know, trees, they're good because they're good for sentient life. But as far as we're aware, they're not individuals experiencing who have the capacity to feel anything, to sense anything, to suffer. So <laughs> that's like the distinction. It's like, okay, yeah, well, why would you include them? Oh God. And even if we were to go down this route anyway, I think we'd kill a lot less plant life uh, if we weren't feeding the 70 billion plus land animals who need to be fed. They eat a lot, big appetites. Some of them are big mammals, you know, who we exploit and kill. <laughs> oh God. They're doing just fine. Earthworms are doing just fine. And they coexist with us four and a half billion years after the earth has formed. So, 
All I'm saying is that whatever struggles, trials, and tribulations we went through as vertebrate mammals, okay, uh, whatever we went through, every single other living thing on this earth has also survived to this point, species that is, or evolved to fit this point. So, and so you want to value judge it? This is a mammal, this has a brain, all right, but have you stopped and thought about what a tree is? A tree is outlives you. But but it can't stop me from chopping it down so it doesn't have a say in this. It does okay. Because I will chop down that oak tree and build a boat and then take that earthworm and catch a tuna and eat it. <laughs> Damn, Chuck. You violated all the <laughs> Chuck don't play. All right, but you know what the oak tree will do? It won't budge when you careen off the road in your car. This is true. Okay. The Neither will a mountain. Do I need to grant rights? To I don't understand where Neil is like, am I missing the point here? Because he's saying Neil deGrasse Tyson explains species bias. Why do we eat some, anim uh, eat some animals and not eat others? On this explainer, Neil deGrasse Tyson and comic co-host Chuck discuss their thoughts on the animal kingdom. So he's like, well, like, it's just so daft that it's like, you know, when you question yourself, you're like, did my brain fog get the better of me? Am I missing the point completely? Or is he really being that much of a ding dong right now? He sounds like a drunk frat boy making up his moral system as he goes. I know. <laughs> There's an incentive to protect the interests, right? and have a bias towards a category. <laughs> like, if they can experience, you know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you now, right? Neil would save a dog over a pot plant. He would save a pig over a pot plant. Hell, he'd probably save any animal over a pot plant, except he didn't, if he didn't like a certain animal. And there would be nothing wrong with that. In fact, if you decided to save the pot plant, over like an animal who's in a burning building, everyone would look at you like, what the hell? And sorry to appeal to popularity, but I think in this instance it's probably justified considering we, <laughs> we freaking understand that a plant is not sentient, cannot feel. It might be doing its own thing and sure, there might be things about plants that we don't yet know. Like it's entirely like, it's probably the case that there's <laughs> loads yet to know about plants. And that we might find something that, uh, you know, signals that, oh, actually, they do experience. But it's very doubtful, considering what we, we come to understand about sentience, come to understand about pain response. You know, pain response is there to protect the life of a sentient being so that they escape the pain or the thing that's causing them pain. A, a plant cannot do that. They can they can use repellents and whatnot uh, from chemical responses and response to stimuli but they can't run away. <laughs> the day I see a plant running away, I'm gonna, <laughs> gonna get a bit scared actually. I just don't understand why he's saying this. Like, what is the point of this? This could have been a really good conversation about why we eat some animals and not eat others, but instead he's gone down this weird rabbit hole of, yeah, but like, have you ever, like, why, do I, why don't we consider the trees though? What? The mass of that oak tree vastly exceeds you plus your automobile. Yeah, the ma mass has nothing to do with the capacity of an individual to suffer. I don't understand. What? Am I just... Have I lost the plot? Am I a few sandwiches short of a picnic? What? What's going on here? Is Neil deGrasse Tyson just too smart for me? That could well be the case. But I don't know why he's gone down this route. It seems like he's just gone down this route to escape actually talking about the species bias within the animals who he himself probably eats, yeah? And so many people have not survived an encounter with a tree. Well, not as a survivor, that. I can tell you that you're absolutely right. And people uh, haven't survived encounters if they've uh, run into mountains or into fences or into buildings. Is a building sentient now? Should we consider the rights of buildings? Because there have been many people who have crashed into a house and not, not live to tell the tale. Like, what's your point? And Geico knows it. Geico knows it. And the tree <laughs> is delivering oxygen to the air cyclically through the seasons that we breathe. 
And one of the most famous poems ever penned was about... Y yeah, what? Trees. Elizabeth Joyce. Barrett Browning. Well, that, I thought it was Joyce Kilmer. Oh, okay, it's, it's, so now we're, now we're using... Po po what? It, what? Uh, when I saw Hench's video on this, he ended up calling Neil a ding dong. Oh, you ding dong! To coin uh, Ellie's phrase. And, you know, I agree. He's being a ding dong. He really is. Is that Joyce Kilmer? I, I, I think, think so. that I shall never see a yeah, poem a, lovely, as a, lovely as a tree. I think if he believes that everything feels pain, why does he eat anything? I think he's using this logic to just kind of basically say that there's no point. So for me, I like artists, and in this case, poets. I don't need them to commemorate amazing facts and, and famous events. I need them to remind me of what I no longer pay attention to. And for me, that's why that poem rose up. That's a beautiful thought. Yeah, it just forces you to reflect on it. So then you should really read some animal rights poems. Hey, that would really help you because what the bloody hell are you barking on about? Not Here, only here's that. a problem so far with your suppositions and your premise. No one has ever written a poem about a tuna. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> If yeah, they did, I'm it's sure not there, famous. Yeah, I'm sure there's a Japanese person somewhere that wrote a poem about a tuna. <laughs> but yeah. the, the, but it's, it's, it's sushi tuna. It's yes, not exactly. the, it's Sushi not grade. The exactly. <laughs> Ain't so, no bump of it's so weird how, like, Neil has tried to assign some consideration to trees, yet here they are mocking the deaths of tuna. I just, I, I don't know how they've gotten to this point. I, it just shows you, like, that people are really good in their given field but then when they venture out of their field it is just brain worms you know yes this whole video is a mess i don't know i don't know why it's even called explain species bias because it's he's acting as if it's beyond that like i don't i don't know B. we're not talking about no bumblebee <laughs> so here's my point so we go through this tree of life and cherry pick it for things we like for whatever reasons we invoke at the time and we could wow. be influential on no right so you've gone yeah but what about trees when a car drives into them the car loses and people die so therefore what what are you concluding from that like we cherry pick the bits that are important. Like, oh yeah, we should probably protect the rights of those who have rights in the first place or, or have or have them because they're an individual with the capacity to experience well-being and suffer. That of which cannot experience doesn't need these things. That's not a requirement because they don't like what? You cherry pick, Neil, because You've been talking about like how, oh yeah, well people like, they eat tuna, but they don't eat dolphins because dolphins are mammals. It's like, you don't you eat mammals, Neil? <laughs> Pretty sure you do. If you're not vegan, you're probably eating either birds or mammals. Oh, and you, you mentioned intelligence. Well, pigs are more intelligent than dogs and cats. So, not that either. I think if anyone's cherry picking, it's the people who eat the animals and then stroke the animals and then claim to love the animals and consider the animals while while they play while while they pay rather for their exploitation and killing they're not even good at being plants rights activists because they kill more plants by eating animals than if they would go vegan yeah i mean i'm doubtful that we would uh, require more plants uh you know if we were weren't feeding 70 billion land animals crops many species of whom uh eat more than we do have more of a recommended daily intake of calories on others and gather groups of people to feel the same way about that. So you will not kill an animal to eat it, but you will slaughter all manner of plant life and eat it. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. Can you uh, show the evidence right, Neil, that so you're going all manner of plant life. You're forgetting that those animals who, you know, are confined are fed those plants anyway. You're forgetting that we have an issue where the Amazon rainforest is still being deforested to this day for cattle farming to make way for these lands that these animals can, um, you know, be pasture-raised on. <laughs> like, what? And again, why is there a need to protect the interests of that of whom 
is not a who. They're not an individual. So yeah, of course, this, I'm not going to smack a human, but I'll smack a table. The table does not care. Does not feel, does not experience doesn't matter therefore me doing that is n it does not have the same moral consequence as me doing it to an to an agent like why is this being explained to neil degrasse tyson someone who's seen as like one of the best thinkers of this like this generation are you okay no it's the use of kill for animals but slaughter for plants yeah as if you're speaking in good faith neil so you're okay with that but not eating the animals you have just absolutely why, why shouldn't I be okay with that? You don't believe plants are sentient, do you? And even if you do, you're forgetting something. That the billions of land animals we kill every single year eat plants. Oh God, this is a mess. Judged that your side of the tree of life is more important than this other side of the tree of life. You would absolutely agree. I don't know why you are even, this is so strange. This is absolutely bewildering. Absolutely, it's more important. When would you ever consider plant life over sentient beings, Neil? Unless you were trying to defend an immoral action such as consuming the body parts of animals who you granted at the start can think and feel, which plants, as we're aware, cannot. That's a massive distinction. Neil deGrasse rights activist. <laughs> can you leave the poor desk alone? Yeah, the desk is gonna start crying in a minute. Table rights been violated. I've reported you to deGrasse Tyson. And there's another very important point I wanna make. Even sticking with the animal side of the tree of life, because we're animals and we're, even, even so, we prefer the fuzzy, cuddly ones. It's okay to have a preference, right? But if it drives uh, your actions to the point where you end up negatively impacting others because you have that bias, then we have a problem. Like say for example, right? I'm a lesbo, right? There are some types of hair that I prefer over others. There are some personalities within women that I prefer, right? And that's fine. I can have like a certain bias that drives me to have a preference, okay? However, if I start looking at, I don't know, women with blonde hair and I decide I don't like that and then I start hurting them or, you know, con contributing to their exploitation and killing, then we have a problem, okay? Having this preference, cute, cuddly, oh, because it reminds you of your own baby, right? Okay, but as long as you don't think, oh God, the ugly ones, I can kill them, right? It's just the same with people. We have a bias towards certain people. Certain, we might like a certain eye color. Or we might like, you know, and it's like, okay, that's fine. Maybe you should analyze why you have that bias in the first place. Maybe challenge it, maybe open your mind. But it becomes a real problem when you start thinking the other things are bad and it drives you to do negative things towards those individuals who have those traits then that's a problem. But like, you don't even like the cuddly ones, do you, Neil? Because you probably eat the cuddly ones. Have you seen baby cows? They're like the cuddliest. Like, baby piggies eating food. I have never seen someone so cuddly in my life. So we don't even like them. No, we like the ones that we've been conditioned not to eat or not to put, like, even the ones we like, we exploit. We can find them in zoos. We test on them, experiments. No animal is safe. All right, we, we prefer, you know, what- Brunettes, delicious blondes of a petty. Yep, we barbecue the brunettes. <laughs> if any of you are brunettes. Whew. Dinner. <laughs> Why is it that the squirrel is cute, but the opossum is nasty? All right, is it because the opossum doesn't have hair on its tail? Yes. And it's not bushy and it Absolutely. doesn't look at you. It's ugly. I think both are cute as hell. Like possums are like, what the hell? Possums are like great. I feel like I feel very strongly aligned with possums because I'm like a bitten and so are they. <laughs> Another important point. I've not heard him make his first important point. That's a good point, stupid vegan. I was thinking that, but didn't say it. That, yeah, he was like, and another important point. Like, wait, sorry, the, <laughs> have you said anything groundbreaking yet? I'm waiting. All right, so we are value judging animals on their beauty for what we want to protect and what we don't. There are things that we would, most of us would just as soon not have, like lethal viruses, like ticks, like mosquitoes, like, right. like bacteria, you know, dysentery. These are life forms 
that we share the earth with. You know, where, where is the community of people that's saying, save the ticks? Well, that might have a little something to do with the fact that when we're looking at ticks and mosquitoes, they're killing people, like lots and lots of people, okay? So they're in a different category where they're like, okay, they're a threat to our life. So we're talking about something else there. Why don't, Neil, you talk about the real species bias going on here, where animals who have done nothing to us and don't do anything to us, we breed into existence forcibly, confine them, take their babies from them and kill them to put them in a sandwich. Why don't we talk about that? Because they're intelligent, they're cute and fluffy. You know, they're some of the most gorgeous animals I've seen in my life, right? They've got all these traits that you were talking about that were apparently valuable and we, oh, suddenly we value them more than we do trees. I think that people value pigs and cows less than trees, right? They'll leave trees be. They'll think, oh, no, you gotta leave that there. It's doing its job and they'll gas, stab, slit the throats of these animals. I know who I'd rather be. The inanimate object who doesn't experience <laughs> than freaking, oh God. Trees were more considered in this conversation than tuna were. Notice how he conveniently doesn't mention cows, chickens or pigs. Yeah, no, isn't that interesting? Yeah, maybe the species bias goes a lot deeper than you think it does, Neil. All right. Somehow we're all okay exterminating them, killing them, getting them out of the... But we'll... What do you mean somehow? I mean, I think if I were in a position where I were in a country where there were millions upon millions of people dying of malaria passed by these animals, I think I would feel like I would prefer them dead, okay? I don't know how to actually deal with those problems, okay? Ethically speaking... I know that we have right to self-defense, so it's like, well, okay, well, if a human being who were uh, incapacitated were doing this, then, you know, what would I do? But that's a little different from when we're talking about the animals who, you know, surely in this conversation you should be talking about, the ones who we put on our plate, who pose no threat to us. We actually breed them into existence and put them in these positions that are compromising. I, yeah, he's... It's so interesting how he's just not talking about it at all. Because they carry disease, uh, or, or uh, not only the ticks, the, who are the jumpers? The um, fleas. The fleas. Exactly, they carry disease. So it's not like well, somehow we're okay with it. It's like, well, maybe it's got something to do with the fact people don't want to die. You know what I mean? Like what individuals do for survival versus what they do in their day-to-day -day life when they don't need to survive to do that to do that thing in order to survive. Those are two different things. You know, what someone will do in a survival situation, for example, someone comes into your house, tries to stab you to death, you're gonna end up causing bodily harm to them or trying to. Whereas if you were just walking around plodding on, you're randomly just without cause trying to cause bodily harm to someone, it's a different context. So yeah, it's, and it's probably got little something to do with that. Okay. The fleas, all by all account, carry the bubonic plague. If you, if the world never had another flea, you probably wouldn't miss it. But that meant you would be exterminating a branch of the tree of life, a species in the tree of life, because it's not convenient for you. And so it's not that it's not convenient, though, Neil. So he can see that he's using language the animal rights activists would use. Oh, it's not convenient for you. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more than inconvenient to die of the bubonic plague. <laughs> I think it's not really inconvenient. Oh, it's convenient for you to not be in the presence of malaria. What the f***, Neil? What the f***? Because it's not convenient. I caramba! Oh, God. I, we are about to completely eradicate the, the, there's a worm, what's it called? The guinea worm. Guinea worm. Which only affects humans, all right? We're about to completely eradicate that. We basically eradicated smallpox, all right? Well, what about the smallpox microbes, all right? Uh I can't. Is he really trying to grant moral consideration to microbes? I'm supposed to look up to these people, yeah? I'm supposed to... <laughs> <sighs> huh? Wajita, right, 
When did smallpox develop sentience? I don't think he cares about sentience. I think he just cares about life. It's like he's like, he doesn't, sentience doesn't matter to him. It's like life itself is the important thing. But then the things that he was saying that, you know, the traits about life, so a tree, they weren't even things that necessitated life in the first place. It was like mass. Okay, well, a mountain has mass. A mountain isn't alive. So it's like smallpox comes from animal agriculture, essentially man-made. I'm pretty sure... S no, that's influenza. I was thinking of influenza apparently came from geese. Smallpox came from, allegedly, was it pigs? I can't remember what animal it's supposed to be. But, oh God. It is amazing how these thinkers of the world, they come together to talk about certain topics. Animal rights so happens to be one of them. And their brain just farts and dies. Why? Why is this happening, Neil? How do they feel about this? So, well, what, what do you mean the microbes? How do they feel about this? They don't. They don't feel. You know this. What do you mean? Do, uh, can I just hear that again? What? Only affects humans, all right? We're about to completely eradicate that. We basically eradicated smallpox, all right? Well, what about the smallpox microbes, all right? Uh, how do they feel about this? They don't feel. Neil, you are being so dishonest because you know this. You are, you are an intelligent man. You can't tell me how do they, like the look in your eyes, right? His face is just like, did something that dumb just come out of your mouth? Like they both know. So well, I'm just, I'm, I'm they just need saying- They to get a lawyer just like everybody else. <laughs> to, 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 to plead to their case. To defend the fact that they should be here. So I, I'm not, I'm not landed anywhere. I just think about all of life. You're not landing anywhere, no. You're really not landing. Okay, it's like you know. It's like you know this is daft, don't you? And all the struggles that life had to go through to get to where it is today. Yes, but you're using, right, the language that you're using, right? Struggle. Okay, when, when we use the term struggle, there is this implication that suffering has come with it hard work has come from it okay there's been no struggle in items in inanimate objects that have just progressed okay typically speaking progressed for the sake of the sentient beings surrounding them who rely on them so you're using these these terms that are appropriate when we're talking about beings who can struggle who can suffer like you are using this emotive language that we can assign to pigs to chickens to cows you know the animals who you haven't actually mentioned there is no way he thinks micros feels this is bananas yeah he's this is dishonesty like surely he's like the smart kid in class justifying why he's allowed to do things others can't and deluding himself that he's not doing a bad job at it yeah i think you're right lewis in the tree of life four and a half billion years after life began wow. and so when I, when I eat lettuce or cucumber, I'm thinking, uh, you know, like as they say with the Native Americans, I, I'm thankful to the plant. And he, and he, the he looks like he's trying not to piss himself laughing when he's saying that. <laughs> Same way I'm thankful to the pig or the cow or the, you know, whatever yeah, else. Yeah, right, the difference is, right, the lettuce and cucumber, they didn't sacrifice, they didn't have to give anything up, they didn't have anything rather should i say taken from them okay in order for you to consume that a pig did they had their lives taken away from them cow or chicken they lost their entire existence okay their sentient life was taken from them so there's a different consequence here you cannot tell me that you would not see the difference between someone stabbing a hedge and someone stabbing a chicken you really can't tell me that right now do you think that there is like an atrocity happening when someone uses an antibacterial wipe and they kill the bacteria in their kitchen. He makes Ellie look smart. Yeah, I feel really smart right now. Because <laughs> the bar right now is in hell. These are things that were alive. Keep in right. mind- Yeah, alive and sentient. You know there's a difference, Neil, don't you? It's, it's, it's almost as if one, there's an incentive to protect the interests of an individual once they become an individual, once they gain sentience. You know this. You are pulling everyone's leg right now. We're kind of stuck killing in order to survive as- Yeah, but killing the alive is different from killing the sentient, isn't it, Neil? You know this. This is all- Primitive as that might be, 
in the galaxy, it's that anything you can digest was once alive. I mean, no, you can digest shit. You're kidding, right? You can literally digest shit. Oh my God, it gets worse. A plant or animal. So we live on a planet where all animals kill other living things to survive. Yeah, but right, that's your <laughs> different category. Living sentient, you're, you're putting the two in the same category for some reason. Why are you doing that when there's a really, really stark distinction between the two? I can't believe this. All animals. Ugh, Every wow. single one of them up and down. Yeah, Where, because you're, you're not making a point here. You're not making a distinct point and not understanding, you know, and treating the distinction between living and sentient. It's something that is imperative, and it is. God forbid you ever kill bacteria while using an abrasive cleaner that hurts the table. I know, oh my God. As if he considers these things. Does he really, when he gets his antibacterial wipe? Th I'm thankful for the bacteria that was here, but sorry, guys. I'm going to have to let you go. You what? Oh, you're taking the piss, mate. You are taking the piss. Brutal, man. Oot, oot, earth is <laughs> earth is brutal. <laughs> People talk about oh, let's. I mean, it is brutal. It this is the smartest we get, apparently, right? And the nonsense that's just spewed out of his mouth. <sighs> in harmony with nature. Nature is in balance. Nature was never in balance. You go in there. It's like dog eat dog or plant eat plant kill plant. Oh, uh, let me put shade on you. Now I got the sunlight and you don't. All right. right. And you wither and die and some. Yeah, but when a plant withers and dies, do you think they're experiencing the suffering that an animal experiences when they wither and die? You do not think that. Other plant and the animal eats you and it is it is. Yeah, it, it feels like it's equilibrium from season to season, but you step back year to year, decade to decade. Why do I feel like you're talking about how brutal nature is and saying, therefore, we don't really need to like change the way we view animals? Like, I feel like you're trying to do that. I feel like if you're not going to overtly say, oh, okay, you know, nature's like that, therefore it's fine. If you're not going to appeal to nature so clearly, I think you're going to imply it. Decades, century to century, there's stuff shifting all the time. So I, I just think of all life as sacred. I don't think you do. I don't think that you do. When you use antibacterial wipes, do you care? Do you consider them? Are you really thinking about them? I think you're just making a load of shit up so that you don't have to talk about the animals who are perpetually exploited and killed. Killed 2.7 trillion animals every single year killed. And I think you just want to brush it under the rug. All careful about them dust bunnies. Whew. Whew. Thinking about them? Sorry, let's think about the dust bunnies. We have to be really careful when we brush this under the rug. Okay, careful when we are, we're, we're, we're touching the rug because there could be some like bacteria Chilling on there very carefully. All right, we don't want to squish them. Yeah, right. Take the piss some more, mate. And I don't, having after having done so, I don't value judge one life over another based on its proximity to us on the tree of life. Because yeah, but people who exploit animals and have these species biases, they don't do that either. All right, because animals far more intelligent than, than others are being exploited and killed, such as pigs. Pigs are eerily similar to us eerily you look at their eyes they've got like the most human looking eyes it's freaky right yep we have them in burgers don't we we have them in in, in sandwiches like no so you're acting like you do this kind of unique thing that no <laughs> i'm i feel as if you probably eat pigs right because loads of people do yes trees maliciously kill people who drive their cars into them i know it's, it's <laughs> Nature's brutal, bro. Because it's all here, and we're all sharing the same Earth. If yeah, I were to you... design Earth differently- Oh, this is really bad. Like, this is just grade three poetry, isn't it? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, we, we all consider each other. That's why I'm not going to change my behavior, and I'm just going to pay for animals to be exploited and killed. Yeah, I won't change. It's because I value all life, and I'm sharing the planet with everybody else. <laughs> oh, fuck off. <laughs> nah. I'd have everybody have to go through photosynthesis and you wouldn't have to kill anything right just go out and sunbathe I got my day's energy what what is the wrong what is wrong though what's the moral wrong with killing plants like what is it I ugh, I want it to expand 
I, w- I want to know where he's coming from because I don't know about you, but I'm not sure. Today, all right, let's go running, you know? <laughs> oh, God, I have a beautiful tan and I'm so full. I am so full of energy. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So aliens that might only thrive on photosynthesis from their host planet or its equivalent will come here and wonder what the hell is wrong with humans. Wow, man. Listen, this is... They, they will wonder what the hell's wrong with humans. The one of the most intelligent people of our generation was sat here equivocating the life of a microbe to a freaking animal who he probably has on his plate and using that as some sort of justification as to why he shouldn't change his behavior. They would look down and be like, crikey, what a bunch of weirdos. They really would. I don't mean to get all deep on you here, but I just have to- I mean, this- All deep. Do you really think you went deep there? I mean, you went deep down the rabbit hole, so actually, yeah, you know what? You, you really did go down one of them rabbit holes, didn't you? So, yeah, okay. No, I take it back. You did go deep. This is ta- really f- some deep philosophical stuff, man. I think about it all. Oh, is he taking the piss? <laughs> I think about it all the time, as you can say. All the time, when I'm preparing food. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know why you probably think that? You're like, oh, yeah, that was... This chicken was a once sentient being, yeah. Oh, but everything's living, really. So, what does it matter? You're just conjuring up a convoluted appeal to futility, aren't you? That's what this is. Wow. Wow. Okay. I don't want to be speciesist. I want to How be... about this? You absolutely are. What? How about this? How about if I just cut the leaves off of plants, but I never take the plant down. I just prune the plant and I eat the parts of the plant. Like, like if- Well, that's a lot of what you do anyway, especially if you're eating things like berries, right? <laughs> you're not having to yeet a tree away. Not that, why does that matter anyway, like, except for the sentient life? Because the plants aren't the sentient life. I can't, I just, I feel like, I feel like I'm teaching baby. I feel like I have children right now. Again. The problem is he's so smart that he doesn't recognize the feeling of, damn, I'm sounding like an idiot right now. That might be the problem. He just thinks like, oh, well, everything that comes out my mouth now is just smart. Just because other people don't say it. Sometimes... The reason why other people don't say it is because it's so immensely smooth-brained. And this is one of those times, Neil, where you should have just thought about it a little bit harder. And the fact that he says, I think about this all the time, think again, and again, until you are not having these thoughts, Neil. If I were to harvest children but only eat their fingers. What? 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 (laughs) (laughs) No, no, here. You know what? I'm so glad, mate, you just said that. Because Neil went, uh huh? Uh huh? Because he understands that a sentient being, such as a kid, right? If you cut off their fingers, if you cut off parts of them, it's going to go out. Isn't with a plant. And Neil's just demonstrated how ridiculous his own argument sounds. Fingers. Let's, tr- let's try that again, shall about we? This? How about if I just cut the leaves off of plants, but I never take the plant down? I just prune the plant and I eat the parts of the plant. Like like if I were to harvest children but only eat their fingers. What? 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 <laughs> Thank you, Neil. You just demonstrated that either you really aren't thinking this through, you haven't thought this through as much as you thought you did, or you know that you are talking in bad faith. You know you are talking out of your butthole. <laughs> no, no, here, here, here it would be. It's, you, you, you harvest colonies of newts and you bite off their legs and tails because they'll regrow and they'll their grow legs back. and tails. They'll yeah. grow back. No. Okay. So, no, you actually haven't thought this through because if you cut off the tails of the newts, they might grow back. But it's going to hurt them, isn't it? It's not going to hurt the plant, is it, Neil? Oh, my God. What's happened? Did someone put a spoon in your brain? What? Right. How about that? It's a new diet, the newt diet. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. I, this was not. A, was this an explainer video? I don't know. It was more just me sharing with you some of my Whoa. daily thoughts. I don't know, man. Uh, this is the worst part. As he thinks about this every day, so he's had time to like really concisely sift through and sculpt this thought, and we're still left with this massive pile of turd. The density is unmatched. 
Children don't regrow fingers. Duh, that's the only reason babies equals plants. Yeah, if children's fingers grew back, you could harvest them and cut off their fingers. Right, Neil. Right. And we're, we're definitely going to get some feedback on this one, man. Yeah, well. I, yeah. I, I think it's a very interesting premise to ponder because it challenges our biases and causes us to re assess our perspectives because most of what we are assigning value to deem valuable right. period right period yeah yeah the i mean yeah on, on things we protect them based on things we deem valuable right or we violate them based on things we deem valuable neil's saying life itself is the valuable thing and plants have life Therefore, it is fine to exploit and kill animals. So, you know, he's not only, you know, protecting, in this case he's not, he's harming. He's justifying the harm of these sentient beings because he values life itself. And for him, apparently, there's no, there's no difference between a microbe and a pig, which I don't believe for a second. I don't believe that he thinks and values microbes Brain, it's a spinal column, mam you know, mammal features. Yeah, it's right. just we've made a judgment, and I don't, I don't know that I'm prepared to do that because I respect all life. And until we have, you don't respect all life, though. I know you don't. We've discussed this. I don't think that you respect, you know, the the bacteria. Um, you know, when you're using your antibacterial wipes. I don't think you respect, you know, viruses when you take a vaccine or something. I'm sure you've taken a vaccine in your time. Did you consider the viruses and how they would like to, uh, you know, uh, take over your system? <laughs> and again, respecting a tree versus respecting a human being. These are two different concepts. Like, again, when we, when we talk about respect, it's, you're talking about agents who can even like typically experience that and, and and feel the effects of that a tree cannot a human can this is he only respects his own life yeah i'm getting that feeling i really am organizations that say save the ticks um i you know save the roaches save the rats um now I'm just it's funny how he has to appeal to animals here who are a direct threat to people's um, existence in a lot of cases, okay? Now, do I think they should just full on be exterminated? No, but it's funny how he has to talk about animals who are a direct threat in, a, in many cases to the livelihoods of people. Like in some cases, you know, their health and their lives. Didn't want to mention the, the animals who we victimized directly who haven't done anything to us no that's funny isn't it that's really interesting i respect all life equals i equally don't respect most life <laughs> except when i'm having a th moment to ponder and then i think really hard about the chicken uh you know who's on my plate and i'm like thanks you know great i, I bet they they appreciate that i was gonna say that back in the late 80s uh when i used to do this we did have a little save the roaches like uh, consortium, but it was a different kind of roach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, man, you gonna throw that away? No, man. <laughs> Wait, speaking of animals, you needed the alligator clip to hold the roach. There you go. <laughs> In mocking animal death again. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, your personal astrophysicist. Keep looking up. Yeah, I think you should keep looking up and stay an astrophysicist and not talk about species bias because something's gone wrong here something's gone really really wrong neil bless there's another video where he's answering audience questions and he basically mocks a question about veganism and doesn't give a serious answer yeah i think let's be uh, scientific for a second shall we my hypothesis is that neil degrasse tyson can't honestly engage with animal rights he did th th there was one honest thing he said at the start and he said, we're species biased and we don't want to admit it. And I think he meant that, but I think what he extended it to, he doesn't mean. <sighs> I do not know. Yikes. That was painful. But as is everything I do on my channel at this point, I just can't catch a break. So I hope you enjoyed that. Because <laughs> I sure didn't actually. I hated 
every second of that. Okay, I need to lie down. 